Did you know that there was a king who ruled for merely 20 minutes? This fact seems almost unimaginable in a world where power dynamics often played out over decades. The gravity of royal reigns is usually measured in years, even centuries. Yet throughout history, there have been monarchs whose time on the throne was so short you could miss it during a coffee break. In this video, dive deep with us into a journey where thrones shift faster than the pages of a book, revealing tales of betrayal and the unpredictable nature of destiny. Grab some popcorn and let's travel back in time for a reign quicker than your phone's battery drain. Emperor Pertinax, 86 days. Born in 126 AD in a humble corner of the vast Roman Empire, Pertinax wasn't your typical blue-blooded royal. He rose through the ranks of the Roman military, serving in the Roman Parthian War of 161 to 166. Fast forward to December 192. Commodus, the emperor, had just been assassinated. So, the Praetorian Guard offered the imperial throne to Pertinax. The Praetorian Guard was the elite bodyguard unit of the Roman emperors, and by this time in Roman history, they had grown quite powerful. But there's a twist. They wanted a monetary bonus, or you can call it a golden handshake. He accepted their offer and promised them a reward upon his ascension. When the time came, Pertinax only offered them a part of the bonus, suggesting that the rest would come from a more fiscally responsible source. They got angry at him. To make matters worse, the emperor had tried to discipline the guards, as they were used to living luxuriously and taking bribes. By March 193 CE, the guard decided to revolt three months into his reign. They stormed the imperial palace and assassinated Pertinax. He was strangled to death while bathing. And then, in a move that would make even modern reality shows blush, the Praetorian Guard auctioned off the empire to the highest bidder. Pertinax was the first emperor of the Year of the Five Emperors. He ruled for only 86 days, from December 31, 192 to March 28, 193. Such a brief reign begs the question, how much briefer can a royal rule be? King Edward V, 78 days on April 9, 1483, King Edward IV of England died, leaving the throne to his 12-year-old son, Edward V. But young Edward's reign was short and shadowed. His uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, was appointed to guide and protect the kingdom. Yet, instead of a guiding hand, Richard maneuvered himself into a position of power, taking the two young princes, Edward and his younger brother Richard, Duke of York, to the Tower of London, a place both of royal residence and imprisonment. Mysterious events followed. By June 26, with a mix of persuasion and political negotiation, Richard had crowned himself King Richard III. The fate of the young princes was lost to history. Their disappearance remains one of the greatest mysteries. Many believe their ambitious uncle, the new king, played a dark role in their fate, but there is insufficient evidence to prove that. Gordian I, 22 days. In 238 AD, an 80-year-old Gordian I and his son Gordian II took the Roman throne in a chaotic year known as the Year of the Six Emperors. They were swiftly defeated in a rebellion against the then-Emperor Maximinus Thrax. Here's the twist. Following his son's death in battle, a heartbroken Gordian I, who was 80 years old at the time, took his own life. This made him the first emperor to commit suicide since Otho in 69. Before becoming emperor, Gordian had a late blooming political career in the Roman Senate, but his early years were likely filled with literary pursuits. Gordian I ruled for only 22 days. Napoleon II, 16 days. Meet Napoleon II, born on March 20, 1811. He was the son of the famous Emperor Napoleon I and Marie-Louise of Austria. This young prince held important titles since birth, such as Prince Imperial of France and King of Rome. However, after the fall of Napoleon I, the family retired to Vienna, where Napoleon II spent most of his life. Here's where it gets interesting. When Napoleon I tried to step down on the 4th of April 1814, he wanted his son to wear the crown, but things went differently than planned. The coalition victors wouldn't let young Napoleon II step up, so Napoleon I had no choice but to completely step down from his throne after a few days. Napoleon II did become the titular emperor of the French after his father's second downfall, but here's the catch. He never really ruled. His reign lasted just a few weeks. He spent the last years of his life in Vienna. At the age of 21, Napoleon II died from tuberculosis. That was barely a life of what-ifs and a reign. Lady Jane Grey, 9 Days 
Moving on to Lady J. Ray, often called the Nine Days Queen, a captivating figure in English history. Imagine at just 16 or 17 years old, being thrust into the world of power and politics, only to have it all stripped away within days. She was the great-granddaughter of King Henry VII, giving her royal blood. When King Edward VI, her cousin, was on his deathbed in June 1553, he declared Jane as his successor. Knowing his half-sister Mary was a devout Catholic, whereas Jane was a devoted Protestant, he thought she would protect the Protestant Church of England he had established. So it began. On the 10th of July 1553, Jane was declared queen. Yet, she never got to feel the crown's weight on her head. Within days, public support swung dramatically towards Mary. In a twist of fate, even the powerful advisers of the kingdom, the Privy Council, switched their loyalty. By the 19th of July, Mary was crowned the queen, leaving Jane's reign lasting only nine days. But that's not the end. Jane was imprisoned in the famed Tower of London. By November, she was found guilty of high treason, a crime punished with the death penalty. But Queen Mary hesitated, showing mercy. However, as time passed, Jane was seen as a potential threat. On the 12th of February 1554, Jane and her young husband were executed. Saad al-Salim al-Sabah, Nine Days now it's time to meet Saad al-Salim al-Sabah. He was born to Abdullah al-Salam al-Sabah, the ruler of Kuwait from 1950 to 1965. Saad was crowned the Emir of Kuwait in 2006, but he wasn't just an Emir. He was a military commander and the first to head Kuwait's Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Defense. During his short reign, health problems were plaguing the Emir. He was often seen attending different events in his wheelchair. This prompted whispers about his inability to rule. Just moments Moments before receiving his oath of office, Saad was voted out by the National Assembly. The torch was then passed to Prime Minister Sabah al Ahmad, who is nominated as the next Emir. King Sigaric, Seven Days King Sigaric's reign over the Visigoths lasted a mere seven days. The Visigoths were a Germanic tribe that had settled within the Roman Empire. Their previous king, Atalf, was assassinated by a loyalist of his archenemy, Cyrus. Taking advantage of the situation, Cyrus's brother Sigaric quickly ascended to the throne. In a shocking act, he killed Atalf's orphaned children. He also humiliated Galla Placidia, Atalf's widow and the daughter of the Roman Emperor Theosodius I, by making her march over 12 miles between a sea of captives. However, Sigaric's reign was short lived. Just a week after coming to power, he was assassinated. And Walia, a relative of Atolf, took over. Sigaric ended Atolf's lineage only to meet his own end just seven days later. Sigaric remains absent from the official list of Visigothic kings. It's fascinating to think that a rule can begin and end in just seven days. Yet, history offers even more fleeting moments of power. Emperor of Northern Wei, less than a day. Emperor Xiao Ming of the Northern Wei dynasty had a daughter, Yuan. She was the only child of the emperor. Yuan was thrust into the spotlight in an unusual twist of politics. When she was born, her grandmother, the powerful Empress Dowager Hu, announced to the kingdom that the child was a boy. This was a strategic move to ensure stability and a continuing dynasty. When Emperor Xiao Ming unexpectedly died, the infant Yuan, only 50 days old, was declared emperor on the 1st of April 528. But this charade lasted just a few hours. Soon, Empress Dowager replaced the infant emperor with Yuan Zhao, another royal relative and prince of Lin Tao. Though Yuan the daughter was once an emperor for a fleeting moment, history didn't remember her as such. Min Shou Min, less than a day. Min Shou Min was the next in line to rule the Pagan dynasty of Burma, around 1117 to 1151. His father, King Sithu I, had him imprisoned. However, after his mother, Queen Yadanabon, stepped in, he was instead exiled to an area now known as Ava, Inwa. There, Min Shin Saw transformed this place into a flourishing region. Years later, in 1167, after the mysterious death of King Sithu, Min Shin Saw returned to Pagan, hoping to become king. His younger brother Naratu greeted him at the port and declared him the new king, but in a twist of fate, that very night, Naratu, who was also responsible for their father's death, betrayed and killed Min Shin Tso. Naratu then declared himself the new king of Burma. As you can see, power's fickle nature often leads to unexpected outcomes, and sometimes reigns that are shorter than a day. King Louis the 19th, 20 minutes. Have you ever heard of a king who ruled for just 20 minutes? 
Louis XIX of France holds the record for the shortest reign in royal history. In 1830, France was going through some intense times with a revolution. King Charles X decided to step down from the throne, hoping his son Louis could bring some stability. Here's the twist. Louis, perhaps seeing the challenges ahead, gave up the throne in less than 20 minutes. Not shorter than some TV show episodes. And during those brief moments, his wife, Marie-Thérèse, daughter of the famous King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, got her super short time as queen. These shortest reigns in royal history are a testament to the fickle nature of power. Even the most powerful people in the world can be toppled from their throne in the blink of an eye.